Ooh, thank you, Lord. All right, this is the way of the righteous, and I just wanted to come on real quick and have this conversation about faith. And being in ministry for some years, especially with deliverance ministry, and seeing uh, some of the extremes of faith. We talked about this during a meeting I had this week, but I really, it keeps coming up because it's, it's one of those things that um, I guess the Lord has given me a, a compassion about uh, because I've seen the, like I said, I've seen the, the extremes of both sides. So we walk by faith. We do everything in the kingdom by faith. And faith is the substance of things hoped for. Now we always hoping that Jesus is going to show up. We are hoping for healing. We are hoping for deliverance. We're, we know what the word of God says, and it's a substance that's not seen yet. So there's no evidence when we go and we pray for someone in the physical, in a tangible way, that something is going to happen. But we know that we serve a great God. Now, how does that relate to faith? In our discussion this week, uh, that that came up as, as far as how um, when we pray for people, it's about how much faith we have. We as the person ministering to uh, someone. So we have the faith to pray that that person is going to be healed and someone referred to it as supernatural faith. Well, the Bible says that because, and this is Matthew 17 and 20, he says, he replied, and this is Jesus, because you have so little faith, truly, I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. So again, he starts off with saying, because you have little faith. But then he said, it don't even take that much faith. <laughs> you can have faith as small as the mustard seed, and you can move that mountain. So the amount of faith that most of us have is easily distorted. It's easily pushed off of its, um, out of its place because of doubt and unbelief because of something in you. But if he said that you don't need to have a supernatural faith, you can have faith as small as a mustard seed. And I know you've guys heard over the years how small a mustard seed is. But it's the faith that Jesus will do, that the Spirit of God in this place is transforming. Okay? So he says, if I have faith, this is 1 Corinthians 13 is 2. If I have faith that can move mountains, but do not love, I am nothing. So now we have this situation where we can have this faith that we can tell the mountain to go, but where's your heart? What is your purpose? What is your motive behind this faith? <laughs> because if it's out of pride or ego, it profits you nothing. That person may get healed. That person may go home. That person may be whole, but it profits you nothing. And then we go on to 1 John 5 and 14. It says, this is the confidence we have in approaching God that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. So what am I saying? We know that we do everything in the kingdom by faith. By faith. But it has to be according to his will. And I know it, well, everybody will say, well, you know, God wants us to be whole and God wants us to be uh, healed and delivered. That's by his stripes we are healed. That's, that's the default we fall on it. But is it 
is it timing? Are we being led by the Holy Spirit? And I can tell you many of stories of people who have come or people we may have interceded for on their behalf and the Lord or the whole, I say the Lord led in a different direction. Okay. These are things that's true. It has to be according to the will of God. It may be timing. This is not the time. And that, let me give you, uh, let me give you a great example of that one would be the man who was born blind. Who God. So he says, as he went along, he saw a blind man with, from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned this man or his parents that he would be born blind? So they assumed that because he was blind, there had to be some kind of sin involved, right? To be, Because that was a penalty. There was a sin and the penalty of that was his illness or his disability. And Jesus said, neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus. But this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as it is day, we must do the work of him who sent me. Night is coming. When no one can work, while I am in the world, I am the light of the world. So in this situation, we have the blind man. The purpose, this was a divine appointment, a divine time where Jesus was going to show up at this, on this day, at this time, and he was going to he was going going to be used to get this man from blindness to seeing. And a lot of us have been used. If you in the kingdom, you part of the remnant, the ecclesia of God, God's going to have a time where he is an appointed time for that person to be born again. It's appointed time for that person to receive their healing, to receive their, their deliverance. It's an appointed time. So that means on Friday at three (laughs) o'clock, hallelujah, somebody about to get set free. Their hearts is ready. Their mind is ready to receive. They have surrendered. They've they've, uh, uh, asked for forgiveness. They have a heart of repentance. And now here you come, the deliverer. And now all you have to do is be led by the Holy Spirit in order to orchestrate the alignment of that time, that purpose with the will of God, and it shall be done. And we do all of that by faith. Now, understanding what the Holy Spirit is saying and how the Holy Spirit is flowing, it takes the relationship and we build, we build that relationship in our secret place. And we also build that relationship as we step out by faith. So sometimes we step out by faith and we're like, Ooh, that was the wrong timing. That's not the end of your, your, (laughs) that's not the end of your relationship in the kingdom. It's not the end. Like you're going to be booted out. Right. Like you, oh, I lost my position in the kingdom because I stepped out and it wasn't by faith. That is what the wilderness does the, or the purpose of your wilderness stage. It's to allow you the space to build your capacity to hear his voice, to understand love and to become love. So now you step out and you realize, OK, that wasn't God. So then you step out again. You like, that was God. That is the experience you need because now I know the voice. Now I understand the umption that comes up in my belly. However it happens, you will start to relate those things to that was God. And it'll never get there if you don't take the step. Sometimes there is nothing there but the step and you take the step and you, and, and, uh, the, the Holy Spirit meets you there. 
and, and then sometimes you have to pull back. But this is the process of building your most holy faith in him and understanding his voice. So in the beginning, it may be, uh, it may be intimidating. Hold on. Oh, no, it didn't. It may be intimidating, but let's read this again. It says, this is the confidence we have. The confidence we have in approaching. Let me see what this is. Because the first, first John 14. Bear with me. First John 14. First John 14 and 5. Is the confidence it's not bringing it up for me but the confidence comes as you build your most holy faith and that's going to be stepping out there by faith and understanding the difference between you the holy spirit guiding you and sometimes it could just be the enemy <laughs> but it takes time to build that it doesn't have to take a whole lifetime but the, the more you do it the better you get so i hope that this helps someone um again this is a very sensitive topic for me because i've seen both extremes i've seen people operating in the faith of god and moving with the with the holy spirit and then you see the miracles on the other side i've seen people uh, move out with false faith right and then you you keep you hearing the words you hearing the wisdom of the bible and the knowledge of the bible but you're not seeing the results of what jesus said we can do and these were the great works and jesus my name i think i said enough Love you and I'll see you later.